All right there, folks. Welcome back to Malmo for what could actually be the final episode of the Malmo series. Uh, of Starters Football Manager 2019 is literally it's in, it's in touching distance. I can't touch it. Um, we may as well wrap up the Champions League, haven't we? So we saw the first three games and it was a very balanced affair, wasn't it? Uh, one 2 nil win, one 2 nil defeat and a 2-2 draw. So, you know, that's how you do it. Uh, we've got, again, the same teams, Dortmund, Kiev and Real Madrid. Obviously two home games, but the two home games do come against those bigger sides. Uh, all sandwiched between the final league game against Falkenbergs. We've absolutely walked the Alsvenskan, as you might expect. Just the one draw, one defeat. Ridiculously coming to Norkoping and the uh, both home, actually. We've won every away game, which normally I like to, to build a, a season on home form, but that's not been the case. Um, yeah, so with three games to play, we better get cracking. There's no real... In, there's nothing really to talk about. The only thing is Dragoski's in just a darling. We'll see out the Champions League campaign because you can see uh, Dragoski's fractured his lower arm. Obviously, we're out Ryan Fredericks because of the strange transfer dealings in Sweden. Conflicts with the European registration window, is, as I'm sure you, I'm sure you know, I'm sure you know. But anyway, I'll see you pitch side for this game against Dortmund. Let's hope we can dispatch the German side and that would really put us in the driving seat at this, this moment in time we are third in the group I think Dinamo Kiev are probably probably out of it having conceded 13 sorry 14 goals or rather being a 14 negative goal difference and losing all three games so far so hopefully we can finish in third place as a bare minimum and carry on in Europe so yeah we'll see you pitch side in just a second so there are the teams then my cat's decided to join me but he's walking off now he's that's the bell in the background. It's not the sirens. He hasn't got a, a siren collar, although that would be quite cool. Uh, teams then, we go with Jezza, Che Gomez and Hurlow up front. Great, Mangala in midfield. Vinheim right side, Dykes left side. And the defence is Bielik, uh, Nielsen and Gokhan Ghul. Obviously, Darlin, as explained, is in nets. Andre Silva remains the danger man. Um, amongst the other th three there, Brandt, Goetze and Royce, certainly dangerous in their own right. So... It's going to be a big test. I've, I'm going to tell them we expect them to win because we're pretty good at home. We are pretty good, especially when teams attack us. And with Dortmund's quality up front, I don't think they know how to do anything other than attack. So hopefully it's going to be enough. Let's just move this up because we're only interested in the one group table. And Silva's taken a knock early on, so things are going well. As Mangala sprays the ball out to Vinheim, who looks for Che Gomez. Crosses, Jezza's under it and heads in. Five minutes in, it's it's uh, it's a it's a big goal for us. It's a massive goal in the context of the of the group. Um, you can see a win. I mean, it, it's not updated, but a win would mean that we go on to nine points. We would actually, if assuming uh, Dean McKay beat Real Madrid, because obviously they will, we'd actually top the group after four games. Uh, I'm talking over the the replay, but you've seen the goal. It's a standard header. Fifteen or so minutes played, then Vices throw in. Goes back to him and hopefully we'll come away with this with Vinheim. Launches it down that right side. Beautifully kept in place. Swings it in. Jezza Hurler 2-0. The German Lucas. I think he's German. He's either German or Austrian. The European Lucas Hurler uh, dispatches that one comfortably. And inside, although we took a 2-0 lead at Dortmund. And that did not work out as intended. That's a great ball down the line. It's, you know, it can easily go out of play. That's a nice ball through as well. And Lucas Hurler, goalkeeper, just absolutely no chance for Timo. Crossed in. Dykes will collect. It's headed away, you see. And Lucas Hurler's on this left side. Dortmund are just pushing so far up front. It's playing right into our hands. And it's a penalty. Uh, Weigel, uh, no, sorry, Yedvai giving away the penalty. And uh, Groich will step up and scores straight down the middle. Uh, looks good when it goes in. Terrible when it doesn't, but it went in this time. And Marco Groich grabs another goal for some reason it's been a good while since we scored oh no sorry ignore me completely i mean we do top the group as it stands i thought we had six points going into this we only had four so the group table has updated it's my brain that hasn't just before the break then it'd be good to go in without any reply from dortmund but here they come nice tackle by uh, vinheim on Goetze, but it breaks to Weiss on this right side and marco royce ghosting in at the far post scores and it makes it 3-1 it's an uncomfortable lead we perhaps should have dealt better with it we never really got out from from this position though and 
you know, Dortmund didn't do a lot wrong from this from this stage. Beal it missing his header and Marco Royce not missing his opportunity to reduce the arrears. So we kick off the second half then. Three goals to one after Royce pulling one back. Hopefully it's not the beginning of a comeback as Hurler gets down this left side early doors and Timo Horn collects the cross. No danger really. And a corner now. There might be danger here though. Vinheim, Jezza heads down and Lucas Hurler just over the crossbar. Went for the spectacular... Uh, bicycle, bicycle motion and you can see that uh, Dortmund's defence not having the best of times rating wise is Vinheim just about collects that somehow it was a complete mess Jay Gomez far stick and Lucas Hurler heads over from all of four yards that's terrible Lucas has got to finish that one he normally would he normally buries pretty much everything as Grich finds Mangala there's a lot of action going on uh, Gokhan Gul goes down the left side to Mitchell Dykes. Can he cross? He can. Lucas Hurler and uh, Shea Gomez has a tap in. Although that's a foul apparently on Timo Horn. Although Timo Horn came diving through a crowd of players. <sighs> Goalkeeper rules, huh? Gorich now down the line to Shea Gomez. Denied a, an easy goal. but he, And it's another penalty. Jezza tumbled over Yedvai again. He could be dismissed here for giving away two penalties. He should be probably. And it is. It, it's in Yedvai. Former Potter from Pushing the Potters, FM 16. 17? FM 17. Um, dismissed and Grich. Oh dear. Timo Horn saves the penalty. Uh, the, the more interesting thing thing for us there, the, probably the, the better bonus for us, is the fact that Dortmund are now down to 10. Uh, rather than, although the goal would have been nice. But uh, we've scored one and missed one in penalty wise. So that's the perfect sample as Mitchell Dykes is in and puts it in the bottom corner. Lovely goal for Mitchell Dykes. And, well, we didn't score the penalty, but we scored, not the rebound, but the second, third, fourth phase of the penalty to miss. Uh, Grich there, Mangala. It's this ball out then from Lucas Hurler. You can see the Dortmund defence is a little bit ramshackle, all uh, crowded together. And straight from kickoff, there'll be more action. Uh, hopefully it's it's not going to go against us. Sakanji so uh, to Dem in the end, and Hector on this left side, and Royce. You can see their fullbacks are still pushing forward. And that might be to their detriment as Jay Gomez finds Mangala. Left now to Hill, who's quite central. Goes left though to Mitchell Dykes, just on the score sheet. Crosses Jay Gomez. It's 4-1. And surely, surely, excuse me, it's 5-1. I've, I've lost count. Um, surely we're going to be winning this game. And hopefully that puts us in pole position to take second place in this group. Uh, it's top of the group would be monstrous. If we can beat Real Madrid here, then you never know. And the action will continue, as you might expect, for a team with 10 men who are not going to stop pushing forward. Gokhan Ghul to Mitchell Dykes, who's been so effective for us today. Grich to Jezza, headed on, and Jay Gomez will collect. This is becoming one of the days, one of the nights for Malmo. A huge win, as it's turning out to be. 6-1 the lead on the hour mark. Uh, Jay Gomez with a goal. And it it can only get worse for Dortmund, to be honest. They need to, to shut up shop. Their movements, or our movement, is causing them so many problems. Six goals to one. I think we'll make some changes then. Things have gone a little bit quiet, and that's probably uh, a good thing for, for Dortmund in the end. We're going to bring on Rangold, and we'll call it there. So Benaku and Gold coming on. Mangala and Dykes departing. Timo Horn, 75 minutes on the timer. If it is a timer, Vinheim heads it in. That's a pretty poor header from uh, on, from Vinheim, but hopefully we don't punish. But though it doesn't really matter at this stage, as Royce is in and Royce scores his second of the game, six goals to two. Uh, I'd normally expect uh, my goalkeeper to be saving that, but it is Darling rather than Djokovic. Djokovic, <laughs> Dragovsky, uh, Novak Djokovic will be signing in the closed, uh, you know, in the winter period. Anyway, and. Well, I think we're going to make another change just to keep a bit of freshness out there and give us, uh, we'll get Pettersson on for Grich. Uh, obviously, Pettersson, if you don't know, if you haven't watched the recent videos, which you should have, then um, Pettersson's rejoined us on loan for Manchester United. So a bit of Champions League football for for the good man. For the young boy, is uh, it's probably not going to go down too badly with Jose Mourinho. Just a few minutes to play them in hand, throw in, find Shea Gomez. The cross was deflected out and Royce, the goal scorer, the danger man, not a surprise. And he found the release ball there is excellent. Sharab's play with it, not so good. But he gets another chance. What will he do this time? He goes back to Weigel and damn. And here's Royce, the danger man. Carry them really. Rudy has. 
And uh, we well, we go in with about four tackles and finally get the ball around. Gold releasing Lucas Hurler. There might be another opportunity as Jezza breaks well, it breaks hearts. And there we have it then. Um, the two goals from Royce, excellent. But the six goals from Malmo, putting the game beyond Dortmund and really opening the group up now. Nine points for Real Madrid, seven points for ourselves in Dortmund. Dinamo Kiev, you've got to stay out of it at this stage. In fact, definitely out of it because it's three points for a win still and three times two is six confirmed. So, yeah. Next game, Real Madrid at the Sved. No, it's not. No, it's not. Ignore me. I thought I thought it was the other way around. That's the bells from the cat. You can see him over my shoulder. Didn't realise he decided to get in play. In fact, he's trying to break out and he's gone. So, good lad. Anyway, Dinamo Kiev next up at, uh, well, where do we have? Uh, yeah, the Olympi the Olympiski. We're going to the Ukraine. That's all we need to know. So I'll see you pitch side with the team news for that game. It's going to be vital that we that we take the points there. And hopefully, what's probably best was probably a Real draw. Ignore the cat. Real Madrid draw with, with Dortmund. Probably be the best result for us there. Anyway, we'll deal with that when we get to it. I'll see you in a minute with the teams. And here we go then, viewers. So it's... It's going to be Kiev, and you can see we've had a bit of a snapshot here. Ronaldo and Pogba scoring for Real Madrid to beat Dortmund, and obviously they kicked off at 6 o'clock, they finished their game. So that means that we're five points adrift of Real, but more importantly, we have a game in hand on Dortmund. So if we win today, which hopefully we will, then we'll move on to 10 points. Now, rare it is for a team to score 10 points in the Champions League group stage and not qualify. But I have done that kind of thing before, so we won't be uh, we won't be relying on that kind of of, uh, of logic. We'll be going for the win against Real, as we're going for the win today. I'll see you pitch side for the team in just a second. So here we go then in the Ukraine. The only real change is going to be Darling in goal. Um, Central defence as well. Last Nielsen out injured, so we go with a back three of uh, Bielik with Hadzi Kadunic and Gokhan Gul. Otherwise, it's pretty much full strength. Unfortunately, we're still about Dragoski, as I say. For uh, Kiev, you can see they've got Verbich, who I know, and otherwise, it's players uh, I don't know. Tamas Kadar, I think, as well. Familiar name to some, perhaps. Let's see if we can keep this going, then. Um, a win here is not, not vital, but very important at the same time. So... You know, a win here really does give us a chance to... It gives us that foot in the door, which, uh, you know, is a phrase I use quite a lot. Anyway, Vinhide down the right side to Jay Gomez. Can we get the perfect start inside the first few minutes? Perhaps not. Vinheim to Grich, to Dykes. Not a bad effort for Mitch. And just over the crossbar. Some seats still available here, as Mangala does well. He's be Jesus, Kadar going through our man but uh, seemingly no foul given and uh, Jay Gomez with a chance but palmed away uh, yeah some seats available here in Kiev we, you know we're not a bigger draw we're not a massive draw obviously but yeah as I was saying Mangala capped now by Belgium so he's on the rise and a few of these loan deals are starting to go to end you'll remember we did take out two year loan deals on a few of these players Mangala uh, Gokhan Gul Lucas Hurler and uh, teams want to give them a chance in the first team as uh, they go close, Kiev go close with a free kick just over the crossbar. Just before the 25 minute mark now, Mangala collects this ball to Grich. A bit of space for Vinheim to work on the right hand side and plays it down the channel to Jay Gomez who crosses. Lucas Hill is under it, tries to head it down but Mitchell Dykes recovers and uh, passes the ball into the bottom corner. We take a one goal lead and you can see that reflected on the old league or group table. Uh, we have a 10 points well, well, we have a ten. We have ten points. We don't have a ten points, and Real Madrid have twelve. Uh, Hurler, they're cleverly playing it off the back of the Dinamo Kiev defender into the path of Mitchell Dykes, who needed no second invitation. The concern is that we might end up with a uh, Mitchell Dykes being red carded because he has been booked. And Stramberg comes forward and decides to take it on his left foot and puts it almost down into the burger stands underneath the stand. Uh, Boyko's goal kick. Yeah, because it comes back, it just keeps coming back and back at Kiev. They've not been a, a good campaign in Europe so far. Lucas Hurl on this left side crosses. Stramberg surely makes it two just after the half hour mark. We're well on our way to potentially a, a second consecutive Champions League knockout stage qualification. Hadzuka Dunic there, the switch of play, very important. Lucas Hurler has been vital to us. 
Uh, we knew he'd be good when we signed him. Didn't think he'd be this good. He's won the uh, Player of the Year in Sweden twice in a row. Corner ball taken by Vinheim. Gokhan goes under it, and it's a complete scramble, and uh, Kiev escape without conceding a third. Not until half-hour mark, a throw in, taken by Kiev, playing dangerously. Kedar, Boyko clears, only to Dykes, though. And Hurler's on it, and Strandberg might have been offside. He wasn't, though, and he rifles that one into the corner. It is absolutely tipping it down. I uh, don't know if you've been in Britain the last couple of last few days. It's It's been like that here, to be quite honest. As uh, Kiev go back to the goalkeeper and Boyko. I don't know if that was a bit sliced, but it came to Dykes. And, it, you know, it's undone a lot of the work that was needed. Yeah, definitely on side from Strandberg, who makes no mistake. Vindheim on the right side. We're into stoppage time in this first half. Uh, cross cut out, but Vindheim and Gala. Strandberg just on side, but... Took it instinctively, but the goalkeeper well positioned. Boyko palmed it away. A corner that'll come to nothing, and that should be half time. As uh, well, I mean, a bit of a melee again in the middle. Uh, we're really going for it. That is offside, and that will be the half. So we get back out there. Then we told the lads to stay to the focus. They put on Zazulia, uh, a name again recognisable to some, perhaps. Uh, Gokhan Gul. Now we're, we're straight into this. Mitchell Dykes and Gala looks for Hurler. Seemed to be a bit of a collision off the ball there. Maybe both players tugging at each other a little bit. Mangala into Grich with a nice bit of space and finds Jay Gomez, who just puts that wide. He'd, he'd normally bury that kind of chance, but you can see he's rating 6.3, not having the best game. Darling out to Hadzikadunic. Grich heads on to the aforementioned 6.3 Jay. And, uh, well, Vinheim unorthodox. And Boyko collects that comfortably. You suspect that that won't be the, the final move in this highlight as here come Kiev for pretty much the first time that we've seen them as Verbich, well maybe not loses out to Vinheim and now it's three on two in our favour Hurler back to Shea Gomez and this time surely he makes it count Shea Gomez never has a bad game gets a goal 4-0 on the night we've really come of age you know we've we've transformed Malmo and Swedish club football in just three years we're now a, a bit of a bit of a Bit of a force, an underdog force when it comes to Europe. We've got good players, good technical ability and good scoring potential throughout the side. Just after the hour mark then, Hasek Adunic tidying up and goes back to uh, Darlin. And I'm quite pleased that we've been able to finish with Darlin. As much as he's not a, as good a goalkeeper as Dragoski, it gives us a chance to, to you know look again at one of the players that started us off. Vinheim gets inside, crosses Lucas Hurler, right foot you finish. Beautiful 5-0 on the night, Dinamo Kiev. Fans are going home what's left. You can see our corner there. Uh, nice sky blue corner. It's the opposite side. We can't see it now. But, uh, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant goal again. Dinamo Kiev are trying to squeeze the play in the centre, but it's it's at wide areas that's in wide areas that they're struggling to contain us. And here we go again, Dykes. It's surely a penalty. Uh, Zambrano giving it away. Completely tripped over, and it's going to be uh, is that uh, is that Stramberg? Yes, it is. Carlos Stramberg to score from the spot. He makes no mistake, and it's six nil. It feels weird to say, to be honest. We're registering big score lines in Europe now against teams of of lower quality. Really showing how far we have bought uh, the, the the Swedish side in just a short space of time. Really. Um, we're collecting a few too many yellow cards. We might not have a team. Be, we're not be able to field a team when it comes down to it next week against Real. But hopefully we don't get too many more. Let's get Ryan Gould on. And uh, also Milosevic. Just to make sure that we don't actually have any players sent off. That would be... That would take the gloss off it somewhat. Vinheim. You just say every time that uh, Kiev have a, have a moment, it actually ends up being a complete waste. Although now I've said that, they'll probably score a couple. Groach picking it off again. Had to, could, we just want this more than they do. Vinheim down to Shea Gomez. Crossed in. Strandberg's under his head's in. Off the, oh, off the crossbar. He, he made me look like a fool. Made me look a fool. But that's not the... Uh, I, I don't know how I'm going to cut all this down, to be honest, into a three-game episode. Even mistakes are coming off. Milosevic plays it through. Hurler, Gould, Groach out right now to Vinheim, who's had the freedom of the park. Che Gomez tackled, but again, you suspect that it will come back our way. Verbich, yep, tackled by Vinheim. They're just too hesitant and slow on the ball. Um, Grich now to Che Gomez, crosses, and it falls to Gould. Ryan Gould with the effort, and it's just over the crossbar. Let's make one final change on the night. 
I think what we'll do is we're going to bring on Jezza for Strandberg. He's, looks as though he's taking a bit of a knock. So we'll get... Uh, let's call him by his real name, shall we? Jeremy F comes on. And Rangel's corner headed in by... He's only been on the field for literally seconds, but our seventh goal of the night. Interesting. Interesting, how, as I say, how far we've managed to, to come. I know it's only Dinamo Kiev, but let's be honest. Dinamo Kiev are stronger than Malmo as it stands. Not anymore. We've made the difference. And it's it's not over yet. And uh, Christian Bielik, the Arsenal loanee, tapping home. Another corner, another goal. And Malmo, 8-0 to the good in the Ukraine. It's just hunger, you know. Dino Kiev's uh, making so many defensive mistakes. They might get one here, though. Pantic headed away, and it's off the bar. And, well, I mean, really, we should be turning this into an attack. Lucas Hurler, if he can play it right, we should do. Jay Gomez, look at all the players in the middle. It's crossed in. Ryan Gould, it's a fantastic save by Boyko, in all fairness. Um, that's, a, that's a great save. Oh, I thought that was off the line as well. I think it was saved again by Boyko. He's had a good few minutes there. Gould will take this free kick. Milosevic stumbling over it. Grujic, two bites at the cherry, but blocked by Kadar. And we're threatening to score even more goals. What a performance it's been here in Kiev. As Lucas Hurler and Che Gomez puts it wide, lets it hit him and put it wide, but offside anyway, so it didn't matter. As we head into stoppage time, and that should be the... Oh, it definitely is the game, isn't it, when you're 8-0 with seconds to go. 8-0 victory in Kiev. We've arrived in Europe, ladies and gentlemen. So that's... Uh, we got what we wanted and it's hard to see now. Let's see. We beat Dortmund and drew with them. So by my money, we qualify. We qualify, right? I'm expecting this to say that we've qualified. There it is. Qualified again. So we go through to the knockout rounds. We play off against Real Madrid in the next game. Bit of a dead rubber, but the chance to finish top of our group containing Real Madrid and Borussia Dortmund. That's that's pretty sensational. Two weeks to go before that game. You'll be here for me with that because I'm going to uh, see you for the for the match in just a second with the lineup. But let's just let's drink that in. Finishing uh, no problems at all. Twelve positive goal difference as well. Huge wins over Kiev and Dortmund in our last two games. Absolutely magical, fantastic. Right, I'll see you pitch side and pop the like on now. Why don't you pop it on? Because we've scored. You know, let's face facts. We've scored four, I mean, we scored eight against uh, Falkenberg, who so I've not told you about. We scored eight there, and then six. So in, in the games you've seen, we've scored 14 goals, and we've got Real Madrid to come. I doubt that's going to finish nil-nil. I'll see you pitch side with the team in just a second. So welcome back then, viewers, for the final Champions League game. We've already qualified, but we're looking for a bit of a scalp over mighty, mighty Real Madrid. Sadly, we've lost quite a few players. Not through injury, not through sales, just simply loan deals expiring, which is the way it works. You know, it's the end of the Swedish season and the clubs that we were trying to deal with weren't willing to give them back. So, players out. Let's have a look. Will it even show on players out? It probably won't, will it? Um, but, you you know, you'll see it there. bielik has gone. No, he's not. He's there. It's a lie. Uh, the other players have gone. Gokhan Ghul has gone. Mangala has gone. Uh, Lucas Hurler has gone. You know, they've all gone. And it's... It's ripped, it's ripped a bit of a hole in the team. You can see familiarity has taken a hit because, you know, these boys have... I mean, you can see there, that gives you an idea. But these boys have, have come into training one day and, and all the mates have, are not there. So, yeah, we're going to put Dragoski back in goal and we're going to put Darling on the bench. Uh, Jakob Tannender is a youngster and he's all right. So if we were staying longer, we'd be probably using him. But I'll see you pitch side with the teams in just a minute's time. So there we have it then. We have our team. Um, it's it's a slightly different team than we'd normally go with, purely because, as I say, we've lost quite a few first-team loanies. So the, the, the starting front three is now Jay Gomez, Strandberg with uh, Jezza on the left. Uh, midfield becomes uh, Gritsch and Gould. And the uh, defence is now Hadzi Kadunic, Bielik and Milosevic. Uh, Dragoski finds his way back in goal. You can see Real Madrid taking it very seriously. And... Yeah, they've gone full full strength, if not even stronger than full strength. A bit odd seeing as they've already qualified, but I suppose they, as much as we are looking at this as a potential game where we can sneak top spot, obviously they want to get top spot as well. And yeah, 
let's see if we can actually get to the game there we go so uh we're in our familiar blue and they're in their um, darker black with electric blue highlight and you can see they're a little bit tired already obviously we've got no more league football as well we've left this go on his own and that seems like a mistake given that there's a player on the right side closing in and that's gareth bale who did the damage last time and inside a minute we've we've conceded the opening goal of the game and probably probably of our own making we're going to demand a little bit more you know we probably an error to to allow isco the freedom of the park and he didn't really have to do a lot did he he didn't have to break his breakneck speed there or anything like that so disappointing last for a bit more then as cross takes this corner and headed away by mitchell dykes but it'll come back in and gareth bale's under it if, if you remember correctly, Gareth Bale scored both goals at the Bernabeu, so he scored three goals against us this season without reply. We've yet to, we haven't scored against Real Madrid, and that would be, that in itself would be quite an achievement. Keylor Navas clears this ball, and uh, while well, Dykes gets in, and Jezza on this left side has been used to playing centrally when he has been involved. Uh, but Grujic hooks the ball out now to Vinheim, brings it down and crosses Stramberg. We've scored against Real Madrid now. Carlos Stramberg on the half an hour mark uh, levels the tie, and. We can see there we draw back behind, two points behind uh, Real Madrid. Uh, lovely, nice little ball out there from Grich. Great control by Vinheim. Stramberg climbing between two Real Madrid powerhouse defenders to head home. Fitness is going to be our our friend today as Milosevic goes jumping for it and wins a penalty. A push from Marcello. And it's going to be Stramberg, I believe, over this penalty kick. Uh, no, Jay Gomez, excuse me, and straight at Kaelin Navas, but the rebound falls to Jay, and he makes it 2-1 on the night, and we actually find ourselves sitting above Real Madrid. Uh, this goes on the wall if we manage to uh, secure top spot in this group. It's a terrible penalty, but the rebound, far better than, than the, uh, the goal that he would have scored anyway. So the second half gets underway. Two goals to one we lead. We've had a good half. Had a good half. Obviously, Real Madrid are very capable on that counter attack, and they've already demonstrated that to us. So we need to uh, to eliminate any opportunities that we might just gift them. Um, you'd say Real Madrid probably still massive favourites to go on and win this game as Dykes collects this throw. And we're into the hour mark, a, a terrible throw in, and Isco clears. We need to be sensible when we da when we have the ball. As Dykes find Jezza back to Dykes, can he go left? No, I mean that was where that's one of the moments I'm talking about to be honest, when you, you just want to be sensible with the ball, not to just give it straight to them, and Gareth Bale rushing in. And without really doing anything of note, Real Madrid have scored twice, and Bale has now scored four goals against us. And that was really our own problem when we created that for them. They had to do a bit with it. It wasn't really a full counter-attack, but we were never really set defensively. Um, yeah, never mind. I think with uh, 20 minutes to go, we're going to look at uh, we're going to look at some changes. You can see now that the strength of the bench is is not is not there, given the amount of players that we've had depart on loan. We can't bring them in because the Champions League will only allow us to register so many players now. So if I buy, if we buy three players, we can't register three players. So we're sort of stuck with the team that we have. As Isco goes in and Dragoski says, we only concede if it's Gareth Bale running in. And it's 2-2 with 10 minutes to go. Um, surely nothing will come from this as Lucas Vasquez crosses. Uh, James, ooh, a bit of an effort to be honest, but Pogba loses out, does he? he? Offside. It seemed hard. He ran 20 yards to collect the ball and was offside. Milosevic plays it out now to Dykes. A little bit of space, but again, this is where we need to be sensible with our attacking player. Tabo we've brought on on the left side. Not a great cross. And now we're up against it as Bale, the goal scorer. Races through. Great tackle from Christian Bielik. The man we've managed to keep on loan. And uh, here we go. Atebo to Stramberg. And he makes it 3-2 with 10 minutes to play. Lovely ball in by Atebo. And we have a 3-2 lead over mighty Real Madrid. That tackle there is as worthy of any goal you will ever score. What a, what a, what a tackle by Bielik. And uh, Stramberg there rifles it in beyond Kalo Navas. And with 10 minutes to go, as I say, Real Madrid will come again. James Rodriguez, Isco cleared though. Vinheim, Real Madrid pushing forward. Might fall in our favour. Jay Gomez on this right side. Can he get to the byline and cross? He can. He's looking for a Tabo. It's a bit offensive when they just save it so easily. You know, I mean, at least 
at least make it look like it was it was difficult to uh, to stop. Um, hmm. Yes. No. 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 Ronaldo. We've managed to keep him quiet for two games. We we kept him out there as Bielik again. As the applause will surely go up. We're going to make another change. We're going to make a change. We're going to get Pettersson on for Grujic. He's not really been in the game, and he has been cautioned. So we'll get Pettersson on. Fresh legs, no cards, so he can he can put a block in if need be. And hopefully we'll deal with this. Vinheim finds Stramberg. That's equally as good a tackle as a Bielik. A Tabo though, finds Pettersson, who tries to send the ball around the corner. Doesn't work, but he gets it back. Gould, Pettersson to Stramberg. Uh, they're on the verge of something quite special. Pettersson, I just, uh, you know, Gould. Good Gould, oh, Gould. Gives it straight to Kovac, Kovacevic and Ronaldo. Ronaldo scores. The only Real Madrid player other than Bale to score against us. Cristiano Ronaldo. You can't keep him quiet for two ties. We demand a little bit more because it would be nice to top this group. I don't want to see it again because it was Gould just dallying on the ball a little bit too much. And five minutes of stoppage time. We're basically through it. It looks as though we're going to tie on the day, which is an achievement in itself. Um, a little bit frustrating that we've led. A couple of times as well yeah so we finish with 11 points we go through i think we have to be very pleased with that you know finishing second again that's good our oh, belix loan deal comes to an end after this game so we really are going to have a very different team for the knockout rounds than we had for the for the qualifying effectively for the group stages so that's it's a bit odd the way it works but that's that's you know we knew this going into it so Obviously, the uh, the draw will be soon. Um, stick with me for that, and we'll get the draw for the knockout rounds, and that will be the next episode of the old knockout rounds. So stick with me, and we'll have the draw. So here we go, then, for that draw, the knockout round. Obviously, last year, this is as far as we got. We drew Arsenal. Arsenal not in the hat this time around. We're obviously second seeds or unseeded, I suppose you might say. Um after finishing second to Real Madrid, so we can't face Real either. Our opponents will be one of Barcelona, Inter, Juventus, Liverpool, Man United, Milan, and Paris Saint Germain. So there is no, there's no tie you want to be honest. But even said that, there's no tie you want in in the unseeded teams either. So we are very much the little fish. So let's let's do some teams. Napoli. Obviously, we could draw Napoli. That wouldn't be too bad. Um, we're not going to draw Napoli though because we're the with a home team. I need to figure this out before I say stupid things. Uh, Man City uh, out with Milan. Ajax, Paris Saint-Germain, Lyon, Man United. So big teams coming out. You'd probably say Inter's probably the the weakest, even though I've not really got an idea as to how the strength of, of the Inter at the moment. Monaco, draw Liverpool. Big tie there. Porto, draw Juventus. It could be... Well, I mean, it, it's... Out of those two, regardless of how strong Inter are, I'd still prefer Inter. And it's going to be Bayern against Inter. So, no, we're going to play Barcelona. Um, and why not? Why not effectively, let's let's be honest, finish the series with a game against Barcelona? We've got a few months to wait before we actually play that. You can see that's going to be on the 19th of Feb. It's now the 16th of December. That's a long way away. Um, Bielik has left the team, so you can see there's a lot of squad not really available we can make one signing that is useful in the champions league obviously barcelona are in the same boat but then they didn't lose half their team at the end of december did they so i'm still sad about it so yeah do pop a like on there for me and subscribe if you haven't already far more football manager not 18 content, 19 content will be coming very shortly as soon as the game is released effectively. But we'll finish this off first. So there is a bit more Football Manager 18 content to enjoy and to feast upon. Uh, so as I say, subscribe and you won't miss it. Any comments as well? If you've enjoyed the series, do please let me know. If you haven't enjoyed the series, let me know. But let me know why. Maybe you don't like Malmo. Um, I agree, it's hard to read the white text on the blue background. That's the only gripe. But I've thoroughly enjoyed it and we'll wrap it up when we play Barcelona. It'll be two legs in the same episode. So I look forward to that. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again on that very next video. Take care and goodbye.